hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. This is my Dawn of Dreams, hard no damage run. We're still in Twisted Kyoto. This is the second boss of the boss gauntlet. We're now playing as Tenkai, and my Tenkai is weak as piss. So, what you're going to see here is I believe you're going to see the strategy against this boss, and then I'm going to speed it up because it takes entirely too long. If I don't speed it up, I apologize, but I will try to fill the silence with some interesting debate, discussion, and just general talkery. So I've been playing a game called the Red Star recently, which is actually a really interesting... It's a super interesting game. If you've never played it, which I, you probably haven't because PS2 games, like, unless you had tons of marketing or a really favourable review, you just kind of faded into obscurity because gaming was nowhere near as, as, as transparent and saturated as a market. So it was really hard to find certain things, unless you were super in the know or old enough to afford to be. But uh, the Red Star is a game which fuses the combat of a f of an action game like this, a character-driven action game, with the shooting mechanics of a shoot 'em up, and it fuses it into this really interesting combination of, of action and shooting. And the game is is pretty cool. I wish it was a little bit deeper, but I'm only six levels in, so it might be. But so far, the, the combos and some of the enemies have been a little bit repetitive. But the bosses have been really fun. And how it works is there are enemies that shoot you, and there are enemies that beat you up with melee. And you use your guns on the ones that shoot you, you use your melee on the ones who are close. And a lot of it is, a lot of the time you play is spent dodging bullets. Like the bosses are something out of. Ikaruga. They fire big patterns of bullets at you, you shoot at them, you dodge them, and uh, you kill them. And it's 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 really, really interesting. And I, I've never seen these genres blended like this, and now I have seen it, it makes me wonder why you don't see more of it. Because every game I think of that's fused genres has essentially created a new genre that has then gone on to be really successful and oftentimes you know, just become really tired because there's too much of it. There's too much exposure. I mean, just look at what first-person shooters used to be. They used to be all about armor and live pickups. They used to be about frantic circle strafing, rocket jumping, you know, insane fast-paced games. And then they moved towards cover, and they moved towards being slower, and then instead of, you know, having perfect aim and you shoot where you put the dot, they, they, they added recoil, they added aiming down sights, they added all these different conventions, and then the genre of first person shooters changed. And then they went on to add RPG elements, and exploring elements, and sandbox elements, and it continued to evolve. But there are certain genres that just don't have that at all. One of them is, is one I'm super interested in, which I just can't find anything of, and that is uh, character-driven competitive action games. And I tweeted out, you know, why haven't we seen 3D beat-em-ups? It seems like a logical extension of that genre, it could be really good. And then a lot of people, which I know would happen, completely misconstrued what I meant and just ended up looking really silly on some of their responses. And the funny thing is, the way they responded was as if to say, you know, how do you not know that this exists? Because when I said 3D, you know, beat-em-ups, they quoted things like Tekken and Virtua Fighter and stuff like that and come now guys think about this Tekken Virtua Fighter anything that is a polygonal beat-em-up is a 2D fucking game where you can sidestep it's not 3D you can't put the camera behind your character you can't do any of that stuff you are fixed on a 2D plane that shifts that is not a 3D action game this is a 3D action game look at it I'm moving around I have full camera control now imagine if I was fighting somebody who was a character just like myself, but that person was controlled by a human being. He had all the abilities I had, and we could have a competitive fight. How cool would that be? And you're probably thinking, well, that's like Dark Souls. Exactly. And that's why I like Dark Souls, because it does this fantastic idea of a 3D beat-em-up, and sure it might not be as, as complex and detailed as, as those you know, as 2D beat-em-ups that are all competitive, but it's still really interesting. And the thing with those games is they've managed to incorporate that into the game design of the single player, so it makes it super unique and interesting and diverse and great. And 
but there's no other games that do this except for a handful and it's it's a genre that hasn't been explored hardly at all it hasn't been explored enough to find subgenres in it ways of doing it really well ways of doing it really poorly and like I, what would you call that genre because i've been looking for a name for it and i literally can't find it and when i've looked online for examples the closest ones i've come at one of them is called blade symphony which if you've never played it it is kind of like a, a dueling pc game where it's it's the same perspective as like a Dark Souls or like this game and you fight an opponent and there's three different fencing styles or blade styles and you fight to the death. And it seems kind of interesting but unfortunately the animations on that game are fucking horrible so it looks like dog shit. And I'm a, a very visual gamer. If something doesn't look stylish and cool and awesome I don't want to do it. So that game is, is definitely not for me. And then a, another example of something that dabbled in this was Anarchy Reigns, which is by Platinum. And um, this is something that had, you know, decent mechanics, it's got great fighting mechanics, and they put it into a multiplayer setting where you could fight with these mechanics against other human players. And it sounds great on paper, but unfortunately, Anarchy Reigns is probably the weakest game that studio's made, and the servers are dead, so no one's playing it. And I don't blame them, because the game literally looks like dog shit brown for 100% of the time. It's just grey, brown, concrete and dust. You know, just imagine if Bayonetta had, you know, that kind of design in it somewhere. It would be so interesting and so amazing, but it's a genre that's never really been fleshed out. It's never been explored. And there's tons of genres like this that I would love to see being explored. Because I am passionate about them, and, you know... The genre that I'm most passionate about is, is games like this. Games that allow me to have a high level of control over a character and, and fight in a, in a melee based combat you know, that can have magic and guns and things. But for the most, it's about reflex, it's about you know learning patterns, it's about you know, inputting buttons precisely, intelligently. And I think it's cool, I think it's awesome, I think it's the best genre there is, and I would love it to be taken to the next stage, but it just isn't. And there might be games out there that I don't know of that are doing this, I just can't think of them, and I can't find them. And I always talk about how I would like to fuse, you know, the, the kind of the JRPG structure with the combat and mechanics of Devil May Cry. And there's so many ways that it could be done with so many licenses, but you just don't see it. You know, they're always very linear, they're always very refined, and I understand for the most it's so that they can make sure that it's 60 frames per second, you know, they can make sure the performance is there. They can also control the environment so they can make it as, as tight and as, and as responsive and as awesome as they want. But as technology advances, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to be more ambitious and these genres will exist. You know, who knows, I might be one of the people who creates them. That would be fucking awesome. But there's just so many cool things that haven't been done, like Star Ocean, Till the End of Time, I think it's called, the most recent one. If anybody plays that game, the first thing you notice is that the characters have some of the worst voice acting ever because they're annoying. I, I pretty much play that entire game on mute because I hate it as far as, as listening to the people talk go. The story is irreverent, stupid JRPG bullshit that... You know, they've been rewriting for the last 20 years. There's a charm to it, admittedly, but Star Ocean to me will always be about the RPG mechanics, the towns, the crafting, you know, the combat. And the combat in that game is fantastic. You're on an open map, when an enemy comes into contact with you, it triggers a fight, it then takes you to a zone where it's, the combat takes place, and you're in full control of your character doing RPG combat. And the combat in it is responsive, it's it's well timed it's the closest I have got to the kind of game I want however that sides way too close to the JRPG and not enough towards the action even though there are some fantastic mechanics in those games like the blindside mechanic I absolutely love that idea and it's a step in the right direction but I would fuse so many genres I really would it's not even funny and I know it would work, and I know that there's fantastic licenses that would make it work, and you'd finally have a game for those licenses that's worth playing. And Platinum Games recently announced that they're taking on Legend of Korra, which is this like sub 
subgenre of Avatar fiction, which I've got no interest in in the anime or the series or any of that stuff because, you know, once you've got into Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, you can't really have time for essentially inspired works because this just looks like another version of that. You know, it's the same with Naruto and all that other stuff. I just don't find it interesting because Dragon Ball did it first and Dragon Ball did it better. And that's a personal opinion, I know people will disagree, but I have no interest in this Legend of Korra. It could be the best thing ever. But I will be buying that game because Platinum makes fantastic action games. And, you know, two, two games in a year is a dream come true for me. Even though one of them is on the Wii U, which is really frustrating. But as much as I want to continue this tangent, I need to talk about this boss because it's a pile of shit. Uh, do you notice how his leg is all electrified because we've destroyed it? Well, if I go near it, it will damage me ambiently. I disagree with that a lot. Uh, the best way to get a critical on this guy is to hit him um, vertically lined up with his spine. If you do that, you will register more than one hit and you'll do the most damage. The pattern here is super easy and simple. The only problem is, occasionally, you can get electrocuted and it's, it's pretty frustrating. But this is the first phase of the final bosses. There are two more coming up and then the final boss. And then the one following this, I'm going to be using Oni because I hate it. You'll notice before we entered here, I bought a bunch of those drive jewels because I wanted to upgrade my my top left uh, purple liney thing, circle. And it's for this upcoming sequence. I also equip an accessory that enables me to be in Oni mode for longer. I'm showing you it here, I believe. I'm picking which one to take off. So... It's called the Prosperity Charm. There you go, Awakening Consumption is decreased by 50%. So I go into this mode and I just start using Helm Splitter on this boss. When her life gets down to about half, she's gonna summon some Hell Spiders. I'm gonna go and kill them, then I'm gonna come back and kill her. And on my test recording, on my normal playthrough, one Oni activation was enough to kill this boss because she didn't summon these enemies. But for some reason, I just could not stop her summoning these, these monsters. So the strategy didn't work because I ran out of Oni mode. So the strategy then changed to having that Prosperity Charm on. And if you do it quick enough, you will have long enough to kill this boss. So you might wonder, why didn't I do this without Oni? Well, do you see those eye lasers? They track you. They track you everywhere you go, and she does not give you a single second to attack her, because she's constantly hitting you with lasers. It, It's not very fun, guys, and it was taking forever, so I was just like, fuck this, let's get on with this, this is boring, it's not fun to watch, Oni mode, dead, see you later, never again, goodbye. And that is the end of the video, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the finale.